Hey everybody, welcome to episode 38 of the Inspired Knitting Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, and I am coming to you from New Brunswick, Canada. Today is Wednesday, November the 14th, 2018. I would first like to start off by welcoming any new viewers who may be tuning in for the very first time, welcome. And to my returning viewers, welcome back. This is a podcast mostly about my knitting adventures. So you can find me on the internet as uh, xcountrygirl1986x on Ravelry. We also have a group for the podcast over there as well under Inspired Knitting Podcast. And you can follow me on Instagram as Inspired Knitting Podcast as well. So yeah, that's where you can find me. If you wish to reach out to me uh, about anything you see, any questions you may have, or just to say hello, please don't hesitate. You can do so via Revelry or even Instagram or email at sweetcomfortdesigns at gmail.com. All that information is down below, of course. So, yeah. How have you guys been? It's been a while. It's been... I'm going to say at least a month and a half since I last talked to you guys. A lot has been going on, uh, good and bad. <laughs> um, so, yes, where do I start? <laughs> I'm going to give just a short little life update and then we will get on to it. So, back in September, um, there was a little incident that happened in the family and... Um, Yes, somebody got sick, and I was really, really scared for a while, so I just needed some downtime away, and yeah, that's what, that's what I did. I deal with anxiety and depression, and if you've been watching for a while, you might have already known this about me. I'm not ashamed to say it. I've been dealing with it for many years now. I've been trying to get a hold on it. <laughs> But it's hard, and there's certain things that trigger it. And uh, this particular incident, it really triggered it. It's somebody that I really care about. I'm not going to go into details, but it's somebody I really care about. And they're okay now, so that's good. But it just really, really scared me. And it happened around a time where um, I had lost my mother. October is always a bad month. Fall in general is always a time where my anxiety and depression seem to really kick in and around the holidays um, as well so yeah <laughs> it's just a time where I used to have a lot of I used to have a hard time dealing with it before it's been getting easier but it was just everything compiled together at the time that just really set me back and I needed to just take a break. So I hadn't podcasted and I even took a step back from my knitting really when I kind of get in that place. Um, I just, it's hard to function. Something that I love and enjoy so much, I just found it really hard to do because my mind just wouldn't shut off. So yeah I just wanted to let you guys know that everything is okay I've had several subscribers uh, friends reach out to me wondering where I was and if I was okay and to all of you thank you so very much I love you guys so much and I value your friendships and I value the knitting community in general I started doing these podcasts I was, I don't know, I was nervous to do them, but I started to do them just because I wanted to be a part of something, and it's been amazing. You guys have been amazing, and you have helped me through so much. In my darkest moments, you guys have made it brighter for me, so thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing that, because you guys got me through a lot, so thank you thank you so yeah there was that and I wanted to get I was starting to get back into my knitting and I got sick it was just a common cold I end up getting it the second time 
and I think I was going on like two weeks where I was coughing pretty bad. So um, I went to the doctors. Didn't want to go to the doctors, but I was forced to go to the doctors. <laughs> and uh, I had bronchitis, so I got medicated for it. It's, I think, been well over a month or so now since I've had it. But um, I still have my moments where if I smell smoke or... Uh, I eat something too sweet. It just causes like this tickle in my throat and then I go into a coughing fit. So I was told that something that once you have bronchitis, it doesn't really go away. So yay, that's fun to know. <laughs> well, oh well, what are you going to do, right? But yes, so I wanted to podcast, but talking for extended periods of time would just cause a tickle and I would be coughing and it wasn't pretty. So I put it off and as it goes, when you don't podcast, I find when I don't podcast for a couple weeks, then you kind of get out of rhythm at a schedule and then you just keep putting it off. I'll do it tomorrow or the next day or the next day and a month and a half later, <laughs> here we are. So yeah, that's what's been going on. That's life. So yeah, here we are. Let's get on with it, right? So I am going to get on with it because there is much more exciting and fun things to talk about. I have some finished objects to share with you guys and some works in progress today. I we'll probably be inserting some pictures either here or at the end of the video of some stuff that I had been working on and finished. I just no longer have them. They've been gifted out. So one of the things was a baby set that I made. Uh, my friend Shelby, hey Shelby, um, her cousin had a little baby girl. So I think it was back in the summer um, sorry, I made the Gramps cardigan by Tin Can Knits and I made it in the Sirdar Snuggly. It was the Fair Isle DK and then just their basic um, Snuggly brand. So I ended up doing a little cardigan with purple buttons. So I just made this set around that sweater. So I still had lots of the uh, colorway for the fair aisle and I still had lots of yellow so I did a little crocheted blanket and with a purple border I did a little yellow uh, bear and I will link the bear below I don't know offhand which one that I used I do know that I got it from I think it's amigurumipatterns.net they, they have books. It's it's a really awesome website. I will link it below for sure. Um, they have tons and tons of, I believe it's mostly just crocheted uh, toys. And they've written, written several books. And yeah, super awesome. So I will link it below. But this pattern comes with a bear. And it also gives you the options to make it into a puppy dog or a bunny. So and you can put fabric in the ears and on the ends of the paws as well. Super cute. I chose to do the teddy bear. So I did that. I did some crocheted booties and some little knitted socks. And I did the beloved hat pattern by Tim Cannons as well. As well. So I did a complete set. I ran wild with it and I had a lot of fun. I forgot to take pictures of it, so uh, Shelby did snap a picture of the stuff that I had given her, except for the sweater because I I totally forgot to put it in the bag. But regardless, um, there is some pictures of the stuff. I also made a Christine Cowell as well by Cozy Up Knits. It's a beautiful, chunky, cabled cowl, and I made that in the Briggs and Little uh, wool and it was I think it was a Briggs and Little Super I believe is what I used I do have a picture of that it's just the picture I took of it on the blocking mats so if I can manage to get a picture of the finished cowl I will try and I'm trying to think what else I might have finished I can't really remember but regardless if I find pictures or 
oh, excuse me, remember what I've done, I will try to include them in here. Um, my rivalry has been taking a big hit as well. I try to create project pages every time I start a project, but um, when it comes to taking pictures for them lately, <laughs> It's been terrible. I have not been keeping it up to date with pictures at all. So I do apologize if I still have some of the stuff. I'm going to try really, really hard to get those pictures up there. But yeah. <laughs> Anywho, let's move on with it. I am going to start off with finished objects. And I have to be very careful because sitting beside me here is uh, the recliner. I have everything sitting on it. And um, Miss Rami has decided that she wanted to curl up on everything. I wonder if I could turn you guys just slightly because she is so cute. You guys see her there? Oh, Hey, Rami. Yeah, my sleepy girl. I love her. Oh, let's see if I can get you guys back. There we go. <laughs> My furry little co-host. Okay. So the first thing I have to share with you guys is so exciting. So I finished my golden hour shawl a little while ago. And I just blocked it this past week. And here it is. Oh, guys, I love this. It is so, so pretty. I am just in love. Oops. So it does just go past my wingspan. So it is fairly large. It's a three uh, skein pattern and it's worsted weight. So for this, I used uh, Patton's Classic Wool and I don't know what the colorways are. I believe they're just numbers. So if you look on my Ravelry page, I should have the colorway numbers in there. I just don't know which ones match to which colors. Um, but I do know that if I go to my local Michaels, um, it's pretty easy to realize what these colors are. So this one is um, just a, like a medium, uh, I would say it's a tan color. My light is kind of washing it out a bit, but it's like a tan brown. Then we go down into a darker brown. And then I chose a cream to go with it. So one of the most amazing things about this pattern is I've been really wanting to try my hand at color work. And I'm just gonna move you guys slightly because the light is causing a shadow. There we go. So one of the most th amazing things about this pattern is that it looks like it's color work, but it's actually fair aisle color work or just fair aisle knitting. I don't know the uh, correct terminology, but the amazing part about it is that this is all done with just slip stitches. So it's not your traditional color work of having to carry your floats or anything like that. It's just done with slip stitches. And it is so easy, guys. And this was such an addicting knit because you have these like different little sections to do. So you have these crosses and then you get a little bit of break where you're doing these, these eyelets and then you get a little bit more of your slip stitches. You got some baubles and then you start to mix your colors around a bit. So it's really addicting. You just want to get that one section done to move on to the next. So it does go really, really fast. So I really, I really enjoyed this. This was fun. So the only thing that I did different on this shawl was um, this repeat down here, if I can get it. Um, this brown section down here with these big eyelets. It's supposed to have one more repeat of them. So there should be another eyelet row down here. I ran out of my dark brown yarn and I really didn't want to have to buy another ball just to finish it. So I decided that it was going to grow anyway when I blocked it. So I just decided to cut it short early. So yeah, that's the only thing. 
when it comes to my yarn, and I believe I have it here with me, these balls come with, I believe it's 220 yards, I think it is. One second, because I got the ball bands here. Okay, it's 100 grams of 100% pure new wool, approximately 210 yards. And it's the Patton's Plastic Worsted. So when I got done, I ended up having, just looking off to my show notes here, I had one gram of the light brown and four grams of the dark brown left. That's all I had left. So I, I didn't think this was going to do one more row of eyelets and I wasn't gonna play the yarn chicken and lose. Maybe I could have, I don't know, but I just didn't want to, to take that chance. Um, when it come to the white, I end up using a whole skein and I actually had um, another ball or two of it here. So I just opened up a new ball and I used it to finish off the border, which is a beautiful Pico edge, as you can see. Love it. So yeah, that one actually, the cream, end up using the uh, full skein plus some. But that's okay. So... Yeah, I highly recommend this pattern. It was a lot of fun to make. And this is a first for me, <laughs> but I'm actually gonna make another one. I want to, this one is a gift for somebody, so it's not for me, but I'm going to be making another one. I went to Michael's uh, this past weekend and I picked up some more yarn. Uh, this time I'm going for um, a different color scheme. But when it comes to the darker color, I end up buying two balls just to make sure I have enough. So I might actually make this part a little extra long. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I did buy some extra yarn for that. So yeah, those are just some things to keep in mind. I don't quite remember what needle I use for this. It could have possibly been a four or a 4.5 millimeter can't remember it is on my Ravelry page though but yeah it turned out really nice and I'm actually surprised by the yarn it uh, it feels kind of rough in the ball but it softened up considerably after blocking so it's actually really nice so I'm definitely going to be knitting with this wool more anyways this is the golden hour by Andrea Mowry highly highly recommend it So, there is that. So, the next thing I have to share with you is some hats. So, I am helping um, my friend Shelby out. She is doing some charity knitting for some hats. And uh, she asked if I could give her a hand. So, of course, I said yes because I've been wanting... Um, pretty easy knits like mindless stuff nothing that I really have to think about so hats of course are perfect for that and I always love knitting for charity too so it's perfect <laughs> so the first one I have to show you and here we go with the green again oh my gosh I really want to get a different camera because this sucks but uh, it is not this color green I'm going to say it's more of a, a turquoise, but my camera picks them up as bright green. Oh well. Anyways, this is the Penny Royal hat, which is a pattern by Tracy Lambert. And I believe it is a free pattern on Rivalry. Super pretty. I haven't blocked any of these hats, and I don't know if I will, but... This one just has a beautiful lacy detail. So super, super beautiful. 
This is just um, a 100% acrylic yarn. I don't even know uh, what the brand is. It's just some that I had in my uh, scrap bag so or scrap basket. So I don't know exactly what it is, but yeah, it's softer and acrylic, so that's nice. It's possible that it's a brunette or a Nipix. Hard to say. But anyways, that's the Penny Royal. And then we have, okay, the Bankhead hat. And this is a pattern by uh, Susie Gorley. I hope I said that right. I have knit this hat up before and I absolutely love it. It's like a broken rib of sorts. So pretty. And it's totally a unisex hat, so... I did the larger size, so this is for a man, but you can knit it in a smaller size as well for a lady. And it's got the one by one twisted rib as well. This is a paid for pattern though, I think, but I highly recommend it. I really, really love this pattern. I am not a huge hat person. Um, in the winter time, I don't wear a lot of hats. I could be freezing and I really don't like wearing hats, but this one here, I'm just going to put it on for a minute. I love this thing. It is so pretty. And the yarn, it's, um, it's a hundred percent acrylic as well. It's the mill ends. We end up uh, getting some from Michael's not too long ago. So I don't know what the brand of it is, but it's, it's just mill ends. What's, what was on the bag and it's really soft and it's really really nice yarn and I almost don't want to give this hat away <laughs> but I will of course but yeah it is beautiful and I love it so yeah so I end up doing a couple more I did this will be very hard to see but I did another hat it's just a basic half double crochet beanie or a toque and you will, oh yeah, you can. Okay. I did like the, um, front post, back post, uh, ribbing for the bottom of the hat. Come on. There we go. We can see it a bit better there. Sorry about my lighting. And then I did work this one up today. And this one is definitely for a man. And I just did the same thing. It's just half double crochets. And then I did the ribbing for the bottom. So, yeah. I hope these get some good use. I will take that one off. I think you're definitely going to see that one again. I'm going to uh, see what's in my stash or just get some, uh, maybe some of the Patton's Classic Wool. I'm not sure yet. And... I'm going to knit myself one of those bankhead hats because I really like them. So anyways, there's some of the hats that I've been working on. And they're like super easy as well. Um, the crocheted one, um, it only took me like, I'm going to say three hours. I did that one, one of the black ones this morning, the man's one. It only took me three hours to do. They work out super, super quick. Uh, the knitted bankhead hat, I'm going to say... A day and a half I think I finished it in a day but then I had to do the the rest of the crown decreases and the finishing up the next day which I didn't take long at all so they are super super quick knits so and crochets so yeah highly recommend them so that is that the next thing I have to share with you is kind of moving on into works in progress so I'm just going to reach for it here and I'm disturbing the baby. <laughs> okay. So this one I am also very excited about. I finished one of my Forever and Always socks. This is a pattern by Danielle George or Danny of the Little Bobbins podcast. And this uh, pattern is the third one from her vintage love story collection and it is a beautiful I am really sorry about that shadow guys 
It's a beautiful uh, cabled pattern and it's got um, a gusset heel and I believe you would call this a rounded toe. I'm not 100% sure. And we got some twisted rib going on here. Super, super pretty. I'm just going to turn it sideways just so you guys can see the cable a little bit better. But there's the cable. Isn't that pretty? The thing that I love about this cable that I find is unique is half of it is in garter stitch and the other half is stockinette stitch. How beautiful is that? I didn't realize that at first when I uh, saw the pattern photos, but then once I started to uh, knit it up, it was like, wow, that's so pretty. So I really love that. I've never seen that before. So that was a fun discovery. But yes, these are a ton of fun. And I honestly don't know what has taken me so long to, to knit them up because they are just gorgeous. So with this pattern, I believe there is a right side and a left side. So this would be the right side. <laughs> Anyways, so I just did what was ever in the pattern first. The yarn I am using is uh, Lay Family Yarns. And I just have to go into my bag to get the tag out. So it's the Lay Family Yarns. It's 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon, 425 meters, and it is in the Buttercup colorway. I just love her tags. They're so beautiful. So, yeah. I really love Kelly's work. She does beautiful yarn. And here is what I have left. This is what it looks like in the skein. It's a beautiful um, natural tone. And it's got like these speckles of uh, brown and gold. There's a little bit of pops of like a pinky red. And there's the odd pop. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the sock or not because of my lighting right now but there's like this odd pop of uh, turquoise as well that you see once in a while like yeah like there's one right there <laughs> it's just the odd one that you see it is so so pretty I really love this yarn so yeah that is lay family yarns in the buttercup colorway so there's my first sock all done. I have yet to cast on the second one. So I'm going to get that casted on and get going on it. So I will have finished the whole collection. I did the um, cereal socks and I also did the, oh gosh, Rita socks as well. And I really want to get this one casted off because Danny came out with her, um, milky chai socks which oh my gosh they are so beautiful as well Danny has some of the most lovely patterns I really love her work so I want to get this sock done so I can cast those on as well so there is my half finished object so moving on now we will go into works in progress and I do apologize I keep looking down I'm just looking at my show notes off to the side I don't want to miss anything so I have another pair of socks on the go right now and these ones I am super excited about as well this is a new cast on if you were watching my last podcast you would have saw I believe it was my last podcast I was knitting the Aster socks which is a pattern by Jacqueline Salem I was really enjoying those socks but um, I'm not sure if this is supposed to happen so the pattern um, 
technically what you're doing is you're slipping some stitches to create the pattern of the sock. And at the top of my sock, um, I was, say this was the sock, it was starting, like the front was pulling downward because my slip stitches, although I was trying to keep them somewhat loose, it just seemed like it was pulling the front of the sock where the slip stitches were. It was just pulling it kind of downward like that. So <laughs> I'm not sure if that would have blocked out, if that's kind of normal for that to happen, but it was worrying me some. I had knitted myself uh, down to the heel. I think I was starting to do the, uh, the gusset and I just decided that <laughs> I was, I didn't want to knit a whole sock and it just not turn out right. And uh, quite honestly, like I said, with everything going on, my frame of mind just wasn't there for the pattern. It was, it's a beautiful pattern. I highly recommend it. There's nothing wrong with the way it's written up. Nothing like that. It was super easy to follow. Um, and easy to do. Very easy to do. But I just... It's just not for me right now. I definitely want to cast them on again in the future and give them another go. Um, but for right now, I just frog them. Yeah. So I decided to, I, since I was using this yarn, I was just going to repurpose it for this pattern. And I think it's a great choice. So first I'll start off by saying that uh, this beautiful, gorgeous colorway is Popsicle Stand, which is a colorway by Long Dog Yarns. So I don't know if I have her tag in here. No, I don't. But uh, yeah, it is a beautiful Superwash Merino nylon base. And it's these orange, beautiful orange color with uh, some pops of green and uh, some pops of hot pink. It's just stunning. It's a lot more vibrant than what is showing up because of my lighting, but yes. So without further ado, <laughs> I just get it out of my DPN holder here. The sock that I chose to cast on was uh, the Jemima Socks by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast. Kay recently came out with her Miss Potter's Sock Club, which is a three sock pattern collection. And we got the first two patterns out now. So Jemima come out in October and Peter came out in, um, I think just a week or two ago. And we are still awaiting um, the last pattern, which I think we're going to get before December, probably way off by those dates. But anyways, two have been released. One more is coming and I am super excited to see what it is. But this is Jemima. This is the first sock of the pattern of the pattern series. And it is just this beautiful texture and it's all done with knits and pearls. So it is super, super mindless, and I am just in love with it. Not plain stockinette, but it's got something going on, and it is just perfect. And with this yarn, I think it's working out beautifully. So as she writes it in the pattern, she put in a contrasting heel. So I had some uh, Knit Picks Hawthorne, and I don't know what the colorway is, but it's like this hot pink. That looks more red, but it's not red. But it's just a tonal hot pink, so I put that in for my heel. And I did the heel decreases, so now I'm just working the length of the foot. And I will probably do the toe in the hot pink as well. So yeah, this is the first sock. So i am just really been enjoying this. This pretty much took three days to do for me working on it on and off so it does work up super quick and yeah <laughs> i'm just really really enjoying it and i can't wait to uh cast on peter next as well my sock mojo uh really faltered a lot this past year i found i've just been really wanting to knit all the shawls and all the the sweaters and 
all that stuff and my knitting for socks kind of went downward but um it's starting to come back a little bit more now <laughs> so anyways these are jemima socks and this is a pattern by Kay jones of the bakery bears podcast so yes if you haven't got her um miss potter's uh club i would highly recommend it because it is really really nice so far so there is that so what do we have next here okay this i haven't worked on in a little while but it has seen progress since the last time we spoke so this is my cardamom coffee hat by Caitlin hunter and it's it's going <laughs> it's pretty slow going but it's going so this is pretty much um, a first for me of sorts this is a full-on color work hat and it's done in fingering weight to boot probably not a great first choice but I saw the pattern and I just had to cast it on because it was so pretty so how about I start by showing you the pattern first so you know what it looks like. So here is the pattern. Cardamom Coffee by Caitlin Hunter. And there it is. How pretty is that? I just think it's so beautiful. So she knits this in... Um, some Madeline Tosh unicorn tails. So she's just using minis to do the uh, to do the color work. I believe the the black here, which is your main color, I believe you need a little bit more of that. I don't know the exact amounts, but I do know that uh, she uses minis to do this. So, anyways, here is what I have so far. I think the last time I sh showed you guys, I was just starting to come into the purple here. So it has grown a lot since then. And I really, really love this. It is so pretty. It's slow going though, like I said, because it is full on color work. The chart is big though. I really love that. Um, I don't have the best time seeing. <laughs> My vision has gone downward. Uh, a little bit in the past couple years I do have glasses no I do not like wearing them I know there's certain people in my life that are shouting at the screen right now I love you but anyways um, I do I do love the chart it's nice and big it's easy to follow and yeah it's a super fun knit it's just a little bit slow but it's totally totally worth it because I mean, look at this. It's just beautiful. So, yeah. I'm just into the purple section again here. And then I, I'm very close to the crown decreases. So, I do have a ways to go yet, but it's definitely getting there. So, yeah. And I'm pretty happy with the inside as well. My I'm trying to be very mindful of my my floats and my tension. So I'm pretty happy with it. I, I'm a continental knitter. And I've been trying to hold like the two strands of color at once. And I just can't do it. So I, I have to drop the color and yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's what's making it a little bit slower. But... Like I said, it's an enjoyable knit, so you just want to keep going to the next row and the next row. But because I'm having to constantly drop the yarn, it's a little, it's a little slow going, but that's okay. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I know that it's going to be a beautiful hat in the end. So, yeah, I just have to find a bright pink pom-pom to put on the top. So the colors that I'm using in this... I'm using the same uh, Knit Picks uh, Hawthorne that I have on the heel of my sock. It's in the hot pink. And then I don't think you'll be able to see the speckles that great. You can up here, 
but this uh, cream color here, this is Rosebud by Barnyard Knits. And then the purple, which is looking black, but it's purple, it is Velvet Grapes by Malabrego. I had some left over, so I thought it would match perfectly. So that's what I'm using for this. So I haven't been able to work on this one of late just because it's taking more concentration than I really can commit to right now. <laughs> so it's been pushed to the back burner a bit, but I do want to get it finished because I want to wear it. It is so pretty and I will probably knit again. <laughs> it is fun. So there is that one. The next thing I have to share with you is another new cast on. Now this one is super exciting for me. I saw this pattern on Instagram and Instagram is so evil because you see all the beautiful things and you want to knit them all. But I saw this pattern and I just had to cast, get the yarn and cast on for it. So you guys have probably seen it before, but it is the Ingalls pattern. And this is another Caitlin Hunter, I believe, I hope. Yes, it is. It is another Caitlin Hunter pattern or a Boylan Networks. And it is this beautiful colorwork yoked pullover. I just love it. And I really love the colors too that she used in hers. That is just beautiful. So I saw this pattern on Ravelry or on Instagram, sorry, and I fell in love with it right away. But I thought, mm, I don't really want to commit to a colorwork sweater yet. And like I was on the fence about it. But then I watched the ladies from Us Pastrico and they had both knit one and oh my gosh, they just look so pretty and so gorgeous. So once I saw that, I fell in love <laughs> and I went online to, I believe it was Yarn Canada and I had to order yarn for it right away. So I'm really going to be disturbing baby now because she's laying on it. Hey baby. I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm going to start off with what I'm using first for yarn. So I saw, I don't remember her name, the ladies from Espastri Co. Uh, the brown haired lady. I'm terrible with names. I have a hard time remembering, but she had done one and hers was a gray with um, the dark, I think a darker gray or a black um, for the color work. And I just love that. So I decided to go with the same kind of colors. Def it's not the same yarn, but I went with uh, Cascade 220 Super Wash. So it is a worsted sweater, but this is Cascade Super, Super Wash 220. And it is in the silver gray colorway. I don't know if this is the Heathers. So here it is. And just one sec, I have to rescue the cat. Everything's falling on her. Sorry, there you go. Okay, and then I had this skein here. This is also Cascade 220. This is just the basic Cascade 220. It's not super wash, but that's okay. And this is in the Gris colorway. So it's like a charcoal gray. So I thought that those two would work really nice together. And I just, I just put it into one of these balls and I'm keeping it in a Ziploc bag. That way it doesn't twist up on me as I am knitting because that is a problem that I have uh, when doing color work. So my cardamom coffee hat, I'm doing the same thing. I have one, um, actually I have both balls because you're working with two colors at once. So I have one ball in the Ziploc and I have the other ball in another Ziploc. That way I can just untwist them easy. So 
that's how I do it. Nothing fancy, but that's how I do it. So here's what I have done so far. This is another one I cast it on weeks ago. I got ex super excited about it and I casted it on once I got the yarn. But again, it's just my mind space right now isn't there for it. So it's been pushed to the back burner for now, but not for long because I really want the sweater. So I'm going to try to show it to you guys. Here's what I have so far. And it does have the back is it's work top down and the back has some uh, short rows. So it does go up higher than the front. And I don't know how to show this to you guys, right? This is wanting to bunch up. But we do have some uh, eyelet holes there, some lace going on. And then I'm just starting into the color work there. So I think I'm like five or six rows in and there are roughly 25 rows of color work, I think. So I got a ways to go, but it is fun. It is really, really nice. And I think it will be worth it. This will probably take me a little while. Um, I've never, I've knitted sweaters before, but they've never been for myself. So I have really no idea what size to really knit for myself. So I like wearing things that are oversized on me and I'm always sitting as well. So I don't want anything that's going to be too tight because when I go to move, you know, I just want something that's loose fitting. So I went for the biggest size in the pattern. I hope it's not going to be too big, <laughs> but hopefully it works out okay. I think it should. I did, um, once I got the lace done, I did put it over my head and it seems like it's going to be okay, but I'm not 100% sure yet. So I will probably just go on with it, do the color work, and then once I get down to the sleeves, try it on again. But if anything, it's going to be a little bit oversized. That's okay. Anyways, that is what I got so far. And yeah, I'm loving it. Really, really loving it. And I can't wait to get back to it as well. So there is that. That is, again, Ingles by Caitlin Hunter or Boylan Networks. So... Yeah, that is fun. And I have the bag here as well. I have been working on my um, Big Old Coat by Hohi Locatelli. So I have a pullover and a cardigan on the go for myself. So yeah, I will show you the cardigan probably next time. So I ended up separating for the sleeves now. So I'm just a little bit past that. I had a little mistake made on it because uh, when I went to separate for um, the sleeves and start knitting the body, I ended up starting on the wrong uh, pattern repeat. So you could clearly see this line uh, going around. So I didn't realize it till I got down a little bit. So I ripped out maybe two inches, I believe, of knitting or almost two inches of knitting. Oh my gosh. And it's on a lot of stitches because I believe, again, I'm doing like the biggest size of the pattern. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun and it was kind of sad. So I end up getting a little bit past the, maybe that much past the, the, split for the sleeves. So I will show you guys that next time um, on the podcast because maybe I can get some more work done on it. So I have that one going as well. That is again another enjoyable knit. So yay! Hopefully I can get at least one of these sweaters done for the colder weather. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So anyways, let's see what else I got here. Okay. 
so that's it for the knitting this week so I have two things to share with you guys so it is moving on into stack as acquisitions so I did make an order with knit picks uh, last month and I got some stuff in I did not pull it out to share it with you guys because I don't want the podcast to go too long in time but I just picked up some uh, yarn for some sh shawls that I'd like to knit so a little bit of dream knitting that I'd like to uh, do is uh, the Kyler shawl I don't remember the designer. I want to say it's like Caitlin Hunter or Isabel Kramer, but I'm sorry. I do not quote me on that because I'm probably wrong, but it's quite a popular one. It's the Kyler and it's a beautiful lace shawl. I would really love to do it. So far I've been knitting all the triangle shawls and I would like to try some different styles as well. So that's one. And um, I got some more sock yarn to do some other socks. And I got, I'm super excited about this. This is a dream knit and it'll probably be my next shawl that I cast on. Um, I saw the ladies over at Cozy Up had knit the Scania shawl. And you're using like, it uses five, I believe, different colors and you're marling them together. And it has all this beautiful fringe and it has this cable going down. Oh my God, it is so, so gorgeous. I don't remember which, I think it was Jamie that knit it. And then I saw, I think it was Joe, their mom, Jojo, I think, <laughs> had knit a black and white one. And oh my gosh, I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I have to have that. So I ended up getting some blacks and grays and I got some... I think it was cream or white. I think it's white. So I got all the colors to make Escania. So that is probably going to be my next shawl that I cast on because it is just so beautiful. So yeah, I'm not going to share the yarn with you because you guys will see it in future knits coming up. But yeah, I did do that. But within that order with Knit Picks, if you made an order of I think it was 50 or 75 dollars you got to pick a, a book of your choice and I think you had eight to ten to choose from and I ended up picking this one which is the Windward Knits and it's by Knit Picks and it is all cables and of course you know me so I had to have that because I just love the cables so I've gone through this book and it is just beautiful I really really love it so I won't be giving anything away but there's the one that's on the cover you can't really see it because of my lighting but yeah there is many pullovers in here there's some um, there's some beautiful cardigans. It is so pretty. There's a shawl. I think there's like two different wraps in here. There's two hats and this hat I really want to do. It is very, very pretty. It's fingering weight. I just have to get the appropriate needles. It calls for, uh, what does it call for? A two two five millimeter. I want it. I would like to do it on a sixteen inch circular, and I don't have uh, like sock size on a interchangeable tip. So I will have to see if my local uh, yarn shop, Crick Cove, has something like that because I'd really like that. But here's one of the wraps. I just love that, and I love the color too. So pretty. So anyways, I'm not going to go through all the patterns in here. I just wanted to show you a couple. But I highly recommend this book. Uh, and it is super cheap anyways. But yes, it's very beautiful. I love it. So hopefully, I know for sure I'm knitting that hat. But I will probably knit... Uh, a sweater or two out of this somebody has put the request in already for a sweater out of this so yeah 
probably you guys will see something from it. Um, it is, I don't, I haven't really looked at the patterns that closely. I do know that there's a lot of charts in here. I will probably, um, if I do them, I will probably scan them and then print them off just so they look a little bit more bigger because like I said, I have problems with my vision a bit. So, but otherwise I really, really love this book and I love the knits in it and yeah, it's a super exciting part of my collection now. So yeah, there is that. And then I have one more thing to share with you. I ended up making an order from Etsy a while ago and I got some stitch markers and I haven't even taken them out yet. So they came in this beautiful little bag and the shop is Yarn Candy Studio and the maker is Lori Ann Baker and she is from Ajax, Ontario. Very beautiful card. And I was looking for some um, some more stitch markers and progress keepers and I ended up coming across her shop and she has some very very beautiful stuff and when I saw these, I just fell in love. And I think there was only two left. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really cannot wait because I was afraid that if I did, they would be gone and I would have been super sad. So are you ready? Because <laughs> these are beautiful. Oh my gosh. This is going to be a little awkward to share with you, but they are these beautiful glass beads and they got these beautiful floral prints on them. I'm gonna try to take a picture of them so in the daylight tomorrow so you guys can see this better because my lighting is just terrible and I am terrible at sharing them. But there's just these beautiful hand-painted beads and oh my gosh, it's just beautiful. So, so beautiful. I love them. So I got the ring stitch markers and it also comes with a progress keeper as well. And it is a little teapot. And it's got the floral glass bead in it as well. Just love them. I really do. And they were reasonably priced as well, and her shipping was reasonably priced, and they got here pretty quick. Really, really love this. So, yeah, they're almost so beautiful, I don't want to use them. <laughs> Just because I'm so afraid that I might break them. I don't think that I could, but I just don't want to take that chance. But, yeah, I will definitely use the Progress Keeper. <laughs> But anyways, they're just so beautiful. So yeah, this was a really fun purchase and super excited about them. So I'm going to put them back in their bubble wrap. <laughs> but I'm going to try to use them because <laughs> they are too beautiful to keep hidden away. So yeah, there is that. So again, that was uh, Yarn yarn Candy Studio on Etsy. So do check her out because her work is beautiful. I really love those. So yeah, that has been pretty much it. I have been a good girl mostly with uh, the yarn purchases. I've been trying to uh, keep it down just because I... I have a lot of knitting that I have right now. I have ripped some stuff out. I'm trying to be more mindful of my knitting like I have said before. I don't want to have all these projects just sitting around weighing me down. I want 
if it's something that I'm no longer really enjoying or liking, then I just want to frog it and repurpose the yarn. So one of the things that I did was um, I was doing the washed out shawl by Hohi Locatelli. I really love the shawl and I plan to redo it, but uh, the yarn I chose to do it. I thought that it looked pretty in the skeins together, but and it does look pretty uh, worked up, but it's not colors that I would really wear. So <laughs> I just chose to uh, rip it out and I will repurpose the yarn into something else. But yes, I will definitely be knitting that shawl. But I just decided that I wasn't enjoying uh, really enjoying the colors and I knew that once I knit it that I probably wouldn't get much wear out of it so yeah I really want that shawl so I I just I just ripped it out so as sad as it was it feels good to have done that so yeah I haven't been really buying any yarn just because I have a decent amount and I have a lot going right now and I want to finish what I have going because they are beautiful projects that I really want so I'm just trying to do better with stuff that way so I've been trying to keep the yarn purchases down a bit because if I have new shiny yarn and patterns then I will want to cast those on and push the old ones aside and I don't really want to do that so yeah um, I did, I do have an order coming soon. I'm not sure, uh, when it's being shipped out yet because I did it on like a pre-order, but, uh, Diane from Suburban Stitcher, she has her fall mystery, uh, yarn, I don't think it's a yarn club, it was just a yarn pre-order for her fall colorway, so I ended up getting her, uh, it's fingering weight, uh, yarn, so I ended up getting the fingering weight, and I got a mini, contrasting mini, to go with it, because you could get just the yarn, or you could get the mini with it, so I got the mini with it, so I am excited to see what she came out with. She kind of gave a preview picture of, um, what she had hoped to gain expression in, um, uh, inspiration from and it's super pretty it's got these reds and uh, a little bit of orange and some grays so it's just a beautiful autumn themed picture and I am excited to see how she interprets that into her yarn because Diane does beautiful beautiful yarn so I'm super excited to see it so I do have that coming, so I'm excited to see when that comes in. So I'll be sure to share that with you guys, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I will stop jibber-jabbering so you guys can go. I do hope that you guys are having an amazing week and you are staying warm. Winter has definitely come into the Maritimes here. Uh, we have had some very blistery weather the last couple weeks. We've had our hydro knocked out twice. Yeah, it was uh, pretty much just like a rain windstorm. It's mostly been the wind. The wind has been getting up to like 100 kilometers uh, now we're 110. Um, so we had two storms last week that did that. And then we had another storm come in yesterday where I think we got like 5 to 10 centimeters of snow. So the snow actually stuck on the ground this time. We had a little bit of snow last week, but after a day it disappeared. I don't think this is disappearing anytime soon. <laughs> it's definitely colder. I think today with the windshield, it was like minus 19 Celsius. <sighs> yeah, winter's here. It's great for the cozy knits, of course, but <laughs> I don't like the snow. <laughs> it's beautiful to look at, of course, but yeah. I can't complain too much because uh, right beside me here, and I if you do hear a uh, noise in the background, we do have a pellet stove that's central here in our main living area. So it's just the blower motor, the blower fan going. So 
if you hear it, that's what it is. But it's like right here, so it's nice and toasty and warm. So I can't complain. It also has a glass window, so you can see the flame. And yeah, I just sit in front of it with my knitting, and it it's wonderful. <laughs> so anyways but yeah i hope you guys are keeping warm where you are because it's pretty chilly here so it's the perfect time for your teas or if you're not a tea person your coffee or hot chocolate and curl up in front of the fire with your knitting and yeah it's pretty amazing so i hope you guys can have some of that time and until next time, I will see you. I don't know when I'll be podcasting again. I know I said this last time, but I am going to probably try to get back on schedule for every week. Um, and if not every week, then I will see you in two weeks. So I hope that's the case. So until then, guys, I love you. Uh, keep checking up on Instagram because I do tend to post the odd picture there of what I'm working on or something like that. So yeah, anyways, till next time, guys, I love you and happy knitting. Bye.